welcome back. I hope you enjoyed my last video where I failed to make a fire in my Dakota fire pit. That's just about what you can expect to happen when you try something for the first time. And fails play pretty well on YouTube, so I didn't think there'd be any problem with uh, sharing that with you. It's a fact of the matters. We've got to be used to failing if we're going to try something new. We're not going to be able to save the world if we're just going to keep doing the things we are doing. So, let's get ready to fail. I've got uh, a couple of fails to show you that I wish I had the video on. Uh, there's a lot of uh, different types of cooking technology in the kitchen and uh, one of the more recent popular ones is this uh, air fryer. Uh, a lot of different designs, different models of air fryers. They all do about the same thing and uh, it's a new thing even though they're been around a while. Uh, a lot of people haven't tried them. A lot of people that have them don't use them much. We haven't gotten too much into using ours because uh, it's a big thing and we don't have room on the counter to leave it sitting out. So uh, yeah, it's good for some stuff but uh, <clears throat> my wife used it for the first time on her own the other day and she didn't remember that uh, the manual and the recipe book were inside. So uh, had a little bit of a fire. That would have been funny on video. First time that my son used it, he was looking for a flat space to put it on and the stove top was nice and flat, nothing on it. So we set it up there, started frying some stuff inside the basket, and decided that he wanted something else. So he put a pot on the burner in front of the air fryer, turned it on. Next thing you know is the air fryer is smoking. He turned on the burner under the air fryer, not the one in front of it. Would have been another great video. So this air fryer is a little bit beat up. It still works. Nobody got hurt. So it's all funny now, right? <clears throat> a much older piece of technology is the microwave. It's been around, I think, uh, I think it was developed in the 50s. I don't actually know the history of it that much. Uh, this is a really old unit. A lot of times uh, you may not like using a microwave. There's some controversy over whether uh, it destroys the nutrients in the food or not. Uh, chances are it's okay to use and it's okay not to use it too, that's fine. But if you have a job and you work somewhere else, oftentimes the microwave is the only way that you can heat something up in the break room. They're safe enough because there's no flame, there's not a heating element, there's just uh, the microwaves which are uh, energizing the uh, particles in the food, making them move around and heat up. So uh, it's awfully simple. You open it up, you throw your food inside, you close it and you set it for what you want. <clears throat> but the way that I see almost everybody failing with the microwave is that it counts down and at the end of the cooking cycle that you've set, every microwave has got an annoying uh, noise that it makes. It may be a long beep, and maybe a number of annoying beeps, and everybody hates that. 
One of the quick ways to fix the noise is to open the door up or might have a button to push and that pops the door open. Noise stops right away. Everything's good, right? <clears throat> Not exactly. The basic uh, duration of each microwave is about three seconds before it dissipates. Uh, so they bounce around in there pretty good. The minute that you open it up, there's still three seconds where those microwaves are bouncing around and now they can come out and cook you too. So, <clears throat> the thing with radiation, which is what a microwave is, like an x-ray is different bandwidths of radiation, but uh, you track the intensity, the frequency and duration of exposure. So, it's a short duration, but if you're microwaving every day, that adds up to a lot of potential damage to you. So what's the solution to operating the microwave more safely? Well, if you've noticed the beeping noise that your microwave makes, it lasts around three seconds. So it's basically telling you when it's done beeping that it's safe to open. Of course, nobody tells you that, do they? Another solution would be, if you don't like that noise, hit the cancel button before it starts happening. And then wait three seconds. You can either walk away and do something and come back, or you can go 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000. Now you're safe to open. So, I hope I never see anybody pulling that door open again. Nah, it's not going to happen. Another safety thing. Safety is boring, isn't it? Sorry. <clears throat> you really shouldn't be cooking stuff in plastic. You probably know that. I know that. We all do it anyway, because what are you going to do sometimes? But ideally, you know, you'd have a glass baking dish, something else that it doesn't have any chance of melting. A lot of times these come with lids, or I love these new silicone things that flop down on just about anything. <clears throat> they don't melt. They don't have uh, any uh, strange uh, chemicals that are going to come off of them unless uh, they start getting over like 500 degrees or something. So uh, whenever you can, choose the right materials. So like I said, we're not going to save the world by doing the same things we're already doing. We're going to need to do new things. And we're going to fail when we do new things. So we have to be prepared, have some humility, maybe be able to joke about it as long as nobody gets hurt. Uh, so this was a much different video than I expected to make. But uh, I'm looking ahead and thinking about uh, some videos that uh, don't necessarily fit the genre that I was expecting when I started this. There's a lot of there's a lot of ways that we can help each other, and I'll be doing what I can to help you. Let's save the world.